Hello, my name is Mrs Chambers and welcome to the first lesson about percentages. So before we go on to our new learning, I just wanted to go over the practice activity that I set for you last time. How did you get on? Did you have to convert all of these using your chains of reasoning or were there some that you just knew? I had a little look and there were some that I definitely just knew the answer to. So I started here with three quarters and 0 0.75. And I know that 0 0.75 is equal to or the same as three quarters. So I could just put my equal sign in here. The next one I went to was the first one and I could use my knowledge of 0 0.75 again of three quarters. And I know that three quarters is greater than one tenth. So one tenth is less than 0 0.75. Okay, the next one I went to uses a half, and I know a half is 0 0.5. So I know that 0 0.5 is greater than 0 0.2. So I could put my greater than sign in that time. Okay, the next one I went to was 0 0.4 and a quarter. And I got a little confused at first because I looked at the four where the tenths are and I looked at the four in the denominator and at first I thought they were the same but then I remembered that a quarter is equal to 0 0.25 so I know that 0 0.4 is greater than 0 0.25 so I could put my greater than symbol in there okay and I use the same understanding here where I know that 0 0.5 is equal to a half and that a half is greater than a fifth. Okay, the one that I wasn't quite sure on was the next one, which was 0 0.8 and 4 fifths. So I had a little think about it, and I decided that I needed to draw a number line. So I drew a number line out. So 0 0.2 is 1 fifth on the number line, and if I look and see where 0 0.8 is, it's on the same pot point as 4 fifths. So 0 0.8 and 4 fifths are equal. They are the same. Okay. When we think about the proportion of a number or amount, then fractions provide one way. For example, if I run one third of a long distance race, this is further than if I run one tenth of the same race. In these lessons, we will be learning about a different way to describe the proportion of a number or amount. It is called percentage. The word percent means for or out of every hundred. We could use this stem sentence. The whole has been divided into 100 equal parts and each equal part is equal to 1%. For example, if 100% of the children in a class have brought in their homework, then it means that every single child in that class has completed it. If 90% of the class have completed their homework, then the majority of the class have completed it. If 50% have completed their homework, then only half of the class have completed it. And if only 10% of the class have completed their homework, then only a small proportion of the class have completed it. 0% would mean that no children had completed it at all. Can you think of any examples of where you have seen or used percentages before? Have a look at this slide. What maths do you notice? Can you spot a pattern or relationship between the amounts? Pause the video and have a look. I noticed that in the boxes underneath the item of clothing, there are two amounts. So here, if we look at the t-shirt, the top amount is eight pound. That is 100% of the amount. The amount underneath is four pound. How would four pound relate to eight pound? Four pound is half of eight pound or 50% of this, this amount. Now let's have a look at this slide. What do you notice about the target board? What percentage does the whole bar represent? And what, and what about what the children are saying? Are they correct? 
pause the video and have a think. The target board looks like a bar that represents 100% of the total amount to be raised. And I can see that a very large proportion of the bar is shaded. The board shows that the children have almost raised the full amount. They have almost raised 100%. Remember our STEM say sentence about, per about percent? So the whole has been divided into 100 equal parts and each equal part is worth 1%. Therefore, I think both children are correct, as 90% is a large part of the whole, and they need to raise another 10% to reach the whole. On this slide, we have a pie chart. Percentages are used here to help show us the proportion of the total amount. What do you notice? Is there a relationship between these percentages? What do you think the whole circle represents? Pause the video and have a think. I noticed that the pie chart is showing me all the different ways that year six traveled to school. 5% took the bus, 20% rode their bicycle, 30% were driven in a car and 45% walked. The total of all these modes of transport is 100% of the children in year six. What does this pie chart tell us? It doesn't tell us the amount of children that are in year six. Instead, it shows the proportion of children who chose a particular mode of transport out of 100%. What was the most popular mode of transport? Walking. What was the least popular mode of transport? Taking the bus, that's right. Have a look at this slide. What does it mean? Can you explain? I was a little confused by this to start off with. I tried to read the bottle as a bar with a total of 100%. But then when I looked at the label, I could see that the label didn't cover 5% of the bottle. 5% of the bottle would be a much smaller proportion than the label. Then I read it again and realized that it said five, less than 5% sugar. So in the whole bottle or 100% of the bottle, only a very small proportion of the contents is sugar. As you might have noticed when we looked at the slides before, percentages tell us about the proportion of a number or amount being considered. It helps us to visualise whether the part is a large or small part of the whole. Here, Navaya is watching a film on her tablet. Estimate the, per the percentage of the film that she has watched so far. Pause the video. If we know that at the start, Navaya had watched 0% of the film and at the end, she had watched 100% of it, then we can see that she's watched around 15 to 20% of that. I've just put a number line up just so that we can just check. So the number line starts at 0% and ends at 100%. So have a look and see where that red line is. She's reasonably near the start of the film and she still has plenty left to watch. Can we tell how long it will take to watch the rest of the film? I don't think we have enough information to work out how much longer the film will last. We can say that Navaya has around 80 to 85% of the film still to watch but we can't say how long this will take as we don't know the duration of the film. This is an icon that I see a lot on my phone. It shows how much power Evie has left in her phone battery. Approximately what percentage of the power remains? We can see this as a 0% to 100% number line and let's see if that helps with, her, with our estimations. So approximately what percentage of the power remains? 
When the battery is fully charged, it will be 100% of the power and she has only used a fairly small proportion of the battery. Quite a large proportion of the battery remains. I estimate it to be around 75%. Is that the same as you? Here's another diagram. This time it shows the percentage of a race that Finn has run so far. About what percentage of the race has Finn already run? Let me put my number line up just to help me with my estimation. I can see that Finn has run half of the distance so far. So that would be halfway along the number line and he's run 50% of the race so far. This plan shows the part of a city where buildings have been damaged by an earthquake. The red section represents the damaged area. Estimate the percentage of the city that has suffered earthquake damage. This time a number line won't help us with our estimates as this plan is not linear. However, you could imagine this was a circle and visualize it. Okay, so when I visualize it as a circle, I've drawn the circle on for you, I can see that a little bit less than half of the city suffered earthquake damage. Half would be 50%, therefore I think approximately 45% of, pro of the proportion of the city suffered earthquake damage. A larger proportion of the city was not damaged. Here we have Amisha's journey from her house to school. What could we say about Amisha? Yes, Amisha is about halfway through her journey to school, so she has travelled 50% of the way. If you have a look at her home and then have a look at school and have a look at where the arrow is, it's about halfway, about 50% of the journey. Next, we have a slide that shows Amisha and Demi's journey. So what could we say about Amisha and Demi and their journey to school? In the last slide, we identified that Amisha was halfway through her journey. What about Demi? Let's have a look with an arrow. Yes, Demi has completed a larger proportion of her journey compared to Amisha. What about the distance that they have travelled? Mm, I agree. I think they have travelled a similar distance, but Demi is more than halfway through her journey. So although both children have worked, walked the same distance, Demi is much closer to school than Amisha is. Let's have a look at this next slide and the positions of the four children on their journeys to school. We've got Amisha and we've got Demi, who we've met before, and this time we've got Ben and Coco as well. Which two children have walked about the same percentage of their journey? Amisha has walked about half or 50% of her journey. Ben has completed a bit less than this. Demi has completed more than half of her journey and Coco appears to have completed half or 50% of hers. So both Amisha and Coco have completed about 50% of their journey. Who has walked the furthest? Ben and Coco have only walked a short distance, but Amisha and Demi who have walked about the same distance, have walked the furthest. Now it's your turn. See if you can estimate who has completed the greatest percentage of their walk, who is less than 50% of the way through their walk to school, and who has walked the shortest distance so far. Okay. And if you want a challenge, so if you would like to challenge yourself, then see if you can find any examples of percentages in real life. 
Thank you once again for working so hard. I hope to see you all again very soon.